blessing to you. It's called the Long Supper Table of the Lord. In his lifetime, my dad worked several men at the sawmill or through farming. And as a young boy, I remember sitting down for supper late in the evening. Many times, someone would pull up outside to talk business with Dad or just visit. Mom would peek through the kitchen window and say, Invite them in. We've got plenty. Dad would open the screen door back as far as it would go. And he'd motion for whoever it was to come on in. We're sitting down for supper, and there's plenty. You know, God does the same thing. He'll stand at the door, holding it wide open, and say, Come. There's room for all. Just come. So, if you've ever come by to visit, or if we've ever eat a meal together, or if we've ever worshiped the Lord together, come on in. Sit down. Your family. Come on in and sit down at the table. Practiced it, and I have to say it's one of my absolute favorite songs because it tells the story of, of Christ's resurrection. Um, everybody has everybody has their side of the story, so to speak. And this is Peter's side, so listen closely. Eight 
Windows and doors were barred, all the windows fastened down. Spent the night in sleeplessness, rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow, half in fear of the day. We find the soldiers breaking through, drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gates began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. But there was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they've moved him in the night, none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away and now his body isn't there. We both ran toward the garden, John ran on ahead. We found the stone and empty tomb just the way Mary said. But the winding sheet that wrapped him in was just an empty shell. How or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Oh, something strange had happened here, just what I did not know. John believed a miracle. I just turned to go. Circumstances and speculation could lift me very high. Cause I'd seen them crucify him, then I saw him die. Back inside the house again, the guilt and anguish came. Everything I'd promised him just added to my shame. When at last it came to choices I denied, I knew his name. Even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. Suddenly the air was filled with a strange and sweet fume. Light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room. And Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide. And I fell down on my knees and I clung to him and cried. Then he raised me to my feet and as I looked into his eyes, love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies. Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet relief. And every fear I'd ever had just melted into 